Welcome to This Week in Jacksonville Plus, something for streaming viewers, in addition to our conversations from the show that airs 9 a.m. on Sundays on Channel 4. So this is special content you will only see here on News for Jax Plus. Jacksonville University's 12th president is celebrating 10 years in his role. Tim Cost recently sat with me to discuss what he calls a transformational era in the school's history. And I asked him about the goals he set right out of the gate in 2013. I thought we should be more aspirational as a university. We could do more. You know, great universities, we saw what Penn could do at Philadelphia. You saw what the great schools in New York City could do and Boston could do. And this was a great city. It just felt to me like my alma mater could step up and do more. It could do more in Arlington, could do more relative to technology, could do more with the media. It had a role to play and it seemed like it was just a little bit back on its heels. And who was I to say? I mean, I'm not, never said I was an expert in higher education. But I'd been in senior positions. I knew what leadership looked like. I thought I had some of those chops. And the, could, you, could you travel leadership? Could, could the idea of bringing people together around a goal, around some aspirations of a university that serves and believes in excellence and can do it humbly and believes that it can be an economic driver and help young people get where they want to go and do it in a faster pace in real time? It's not helpful to catch up with what's needed in the worlds of engineering or financial technology if you're four years late, because those people, young people coming through will be disadvantaged. So we certainly picked up the pace and things have gone okay. So what are some of those highlights of what has changed here at Jacksonville University over the course of the last decade? And clearly you've talked about there are still things to come. Oh, there's so much left to do. And that's the exciting thing. So now you're working from a position where you're you know, your national rankings are higher than they've ever been. That's nice. The quality of the young people coming here is as good or better than it's ever been. They come from around the world and they stay. Um, our, our, a big goal of ours was could you get a culture? Could you rally around a common set of beliefs of what the role of the modern private liberal arts and sciences university could be? That was a big part, and I think we're in good shape. But the other, and I think the one that probably most people think about when they think of us is could you kind of pivot around the corner to being more responsive to where you are. So a military town, a business town, a healthcare town, what is it you see us talking about? Lots of things in those three areas. So if this were Nashville and they wanted us to be great in music, I would have put more effort into that. If it were Palo Alto and they wanted it more into the tech world, we'd have gone earlier into that. It was, could you be not just in Arlington, but of Arlington? So could you reflect all the needs of all the great hospitals, all the healthcare systems, all the technology companies, and get closer and closer and closer, these signature programs we've created, could you get them closer and be more responsive to what the market needs while keeping all your basic liberal arts core, which we have. So that was probably the biggest part of the strategy and where we made bets. We wanted more swings up to bat. We wanted to pick up the pace on things. And it's one thing to have a great nursing program, and we do, and a great orthodontics program, and we do. But then what about speech pathology, kinesiology, mental health counseling, occupational therapy, physical therapy, respiratory? We teach it all now, and we put it all in in the last few years because that's, that's what this community needs. And we want to be a good partner in the community. One of those needs that you might have uh, examined if you're looking from the outside in just a few years ago was, oh, the only law school in Jacksonville is now out of business. Yeah. Hey, there's an opportunity. Is that how you approached yeah. uh, beginning the School of Law for Jacksonville yeah, University? The, the College of Law opportunity was something we had thought about for years. You, you look at what we teach, uh, whether it's health, uh, health, whether it's English or economics or criminal justice or you know, all those things lead one down a path uh, which could have a lot of our students, and they did, go on to law school. And they would go on to law school all around the country, and we have good friends who go to Georgetown Law, they go to Yale Law, that sort of thing. Uh, and so we kept looking at, is that a natural, what in strategy terms you call an adjacency? You know, if you have an orthodontic school like we do, might you get into oral implantology, which we do. I mean, that's different than you have orthodontics, let's get into veterinary care, okay? So we kept looking at this and it really wasn't a big play on who was or wasn't in the market. There wasn't, um, we thought there was an opportunity to serve our current students who wanted to go on to law school and stay in the area. Our great current students who wanted to go to law school up until then left the area. And they went to find a law school, whether it was nearby in large state schools or up into the mid-Atlantic and northeast. So the, the issue was more, is it a natural extension of what we teach? And then we did a lot of work on it. I mean, we researched this thing for the better part of five years. And then things kind of 
merged together. The city of Jacksonville was very helpful. We were extraordinarily fortunate to find a dean, Nick Allard, who's you know got a background at Princeton, Oxford, a Rhodes Scholarship, mm, impressive in Yale, credential, and yes. and and just the perfect uh, founding dean for that program. So we thought we had it on the right path. So far, it's been a good start. Medical school also coming. That was our most recent interview yeah. when you guys unveiled plans yeah. for LeCom. Yeah. So the idea with the medical school is you go from. Um, what, what is now the largest college, we have five colleges, 11 schools, and four institutes. The largest college of the university, almost half of all the students who go here, are in a healthcare-related field. It makes sense in Jacksonville. It, it matches what's going on in the, and I say this is probably the greatest healthcare city we've ever, Stephanie and I have ever lived in, and that includes New York, Washington, and Philadelphia. So this idea that there was an opportunity as we built out the School of Applied Health Sciences, the School of Nursing, and the School of Orthodontics, where might that naturally take you? And we then did a lot of research on MDs and DOs, doctorates of osteopathy. We talked to people who are on our board. We talked to folks from Florida Blue and Baptist and Brooks and the Mayo Clinic. And you're looking for how do you serve the community? And it did turn out to be that there had never been a four-year medical school here in Jacksonville, Florida in 200 years. That's not, we didn't do it so we could say we said that. We did it because this community, what we believe would benefit from it. This partnership looks great. Uh, it's gonna move its way through 2024, 2026. And then all these hospitals have agreed to partner with us for the rotations, clinical rotations, starting in the late 20s. So you take that plus the law school, plus the new STEAM Institute, which is 3D and VR and AI and cyber and robotics, which a lot of people don't even know we teach. We have a whole building dedicated to it now, and we just opened it, so that'll be the source of another discussion maybe. We've got three personal questions for you now. So let's start here. Uh, lots of successes in your tenure so far at Jacksonville University. What's been the most uh, disappointing or discouraging, the thing that you really wanted and maybe it just didn't happen? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm not wired very well for that sort of thing. I mean, the other night I was talking about looking forward to right. 2030 and looking back at the failures and somehow I forget them all. <laughs> um, I, I, I would say the one that's been the most elusive has been, I mean, we really believe in Arlington here. I mean, I think Arlington is, is an extraordinary place to live. Many, many prominent people of, and people of all types grew up in Arlington. And I thought if we lit that fuse back in 2013, that we could create a renaissance in Arlington akin to what people today might say was somewhat like Riverside. Um, but the idea that um, we could be a, a hub of activity, athletics, academics, the arts, speaker series, you know, come here, look out the window, the waterfront, right on the St. John's. Um, that, one's, that one's taken longer. It's been more elusive. I am confident it's going to happen. I think there's going to be a collegiate village around this university. I think there's going to be amenities. There's going to be restaurants. There's going to be a hotel. There's going to be places to live. And, you know, from my office to City Hall is nine minutes. So it's not Mexico City. I mean, it should work. But it's been, it's been a lot of hard work. It's been worth it. Uh, we're going to get there. We're starting to get some traction, but it's been the most elusive. Can I leave it there? Yes, you can. <laughs> Um, you've not just stayed on campus, you've been involved in the community. Um, the other night at the celebration for your 10 years, it was even mentioned, hey, on the Civic Council, and you've taken some roles where you've actively been involved outside of just the boundaries of the campus. Is there any path in the future that Tim Koss says, I'm going to run for public office? No. Not a chance, he says. Pu public office, um, if, if you're, uh, and probably it's happened to you, if you're as good as you are on camera, if you look a certain way, if you can organize your thoughts, if you have a unique policy position, uh, all the way back to my 20s, someone has said, here's what you ought to do. You ought to run for office. Um, you know, at this point, 40 years into my career, this is the place we love. I'll give this place everything I've got for however many years the board of trustees would like me to. Um, we get so much from the students. Uh, I'm very familiar with elected office, have a lot of friends who are U.S. senators and governors and think I applaud them, but I think I probably serve this community best in this role, not one like that. Maybe final question for you. What would 1977 Tim Cost say to 2023 Tim Cost 
announcing, hey, someday you're going to be president at this university that you're just starting at. What would your reaction have been? Um, we were so built uh, in my day for sort of a singularity of purpose. And it wouldn't have occurred to a 77 Tim Cost, who would have been 18 years old, that he would have kind of the, f the good fortune to have multiple bites at a career, you know, here, then corporation, then the world of not-for-profits, and then the world of higher education, and all the boards I'm lucky enough to sit on, would have never occurred to me. And I think the 1977 Tim Cost would have said, how about that? You can watch for more in-depth interviews just like this one. It's in addition to our show that airs at 9 a.m. Sundays on Channel 4. This is special content you will only see here on News 4 Jax Plus.